Welcome back to another video. We are going to be doing a moody autumnal landscape today using two colors and we'll be able to create this beautiful shade of brown and this beautiful shade of gray and a bit more on the blue side for those mountains. We'll be lifting some paint and using lots of misty effects for the uh, mountain side. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to start by spraying the back of my paper, not to where it's soaked, just enough to stick there. Yes, it does eventually come up, but it's a nice start. I am also spraying the top just to flatten it out and then taking my size 12 uh, long round, I am adding more water in various places of my paper. You can see that I did not fill the entire sheet with water and that's because when I lay down this gray, which is a mixture of Payne's gray and burnt sienna, you can get a beautiful uh, warm gray, uh, I start to lay it down and it will eventually pool in different areas and uh, harden in, uh, like the lines will get hard where the wet meets the dry paper, if that makes sense. So I am just randomly putting it all over and mushing it around with the bristles and just trying to create some form of texture in the background. Now, of course, this is going to dry a lot lighter, but feel free to add a darker gray as well. And if you like this video and you haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate it if you stuck around and uh, liked and subscribed and uh, more importantly leave a comment I love communicating with you all so I appreciate your time uh, watching these videos so now I am adding in a bit more of uh, water down the page and now I'm laying down some quinacridone orange and I do have a little bit of Payne's gray mixed in uh, my quinacridone orange. I'm just going to call it orange because it's too long to say <laughs> the name so I'm just going to go ahead and say orange and brown but everything will be in the description below. I decided to add a bit more of the Payne's Gray to darken it up. The more Payne's Gray you add, the darker it's going to be. It will eventually become a bit more brown which you'll see towards the end here. And because the paper is wet, it's feathering out and creating lots of different texture. Now this is my uh, land, of course. And I continue to drop it in and play around with it. As you see the paint getting darker, you'll know that I'm just adding a bit more of the blue and I'm adding less water to my brush and having more saturated paint. So that's another way to get that paint darker. And now you can see it's really dark compared to what it was before. And the way that I moved the sky and the way that I'm kind of moving and lifting and wiggling my brush with this orange, I am trying to keep in mind mist because I'm going to add in my mountain. Now you can see that I sprayed there and that's because I wanted the tiny little droplets to add a bit more texture to the foreground. Using my Filbert brush, you can see that I have these little spaces or gaps at the end. It's called a Filbert Grainer brush. And I have been playing around with this brush for mountains because look at the texture that it gives you. It's just fun. Are you supposed to use this brush for it or is this brush intended for mountains? I don't think so, but hey, use whatever works. You'll see me go between the two brushes, but you'll see that when I just drag this brush, wiggle it around, smush the bristles in, you get these really fun textures. I used less pigment on my brush to create a lighter value for the mountain and then pulled darker or more saturated pigment and going 
over that light area. I also dip my brush in water, so where it looks a bit more wet, that's it is. And I did that to make it softer, and when I add in the darker paint, it can kind of separate. And then I have a combination of hard lines and smoother lines because the darker paint flowing into that watery uh, paint will just naturally spread out. And then I continue to manipulate the shape of my mountain, trying to keep in mind that there is mist wrapping around um, that top of the mountain and most of it. So there's really not much land that you'll see uh, from the mountain because I did want to focus on having the mist wrap around it. And of course, I was inspired by a photo I saw on Pinterest. I get so much in inspiration from Pinterest, so if that's not something you've checked out, I highly recommend getting a Pinterest account and just looking at all of the wonderful photography on there and just coming up with your own idea of how you can manipulate the scene that you might fall in love with. So again, misting my paper there, trying to get better at showing you when I missed and I don't do too many sprays, just a few. And I wanted to do that to get the paper a little bit wet. So when I applied this next layer of dark orange, or almost brown at this point, um, it will smooth out. Again, just playing with it. You'll see that the paint does get overworked. I find that I do this when I record. <laughs> I don't know what it is when I paint on my own without feeling, you know, that it needs to be, I don't know, a certain way or am I, is my head in the way or whatever I'm thinking about when I'm recording. Um, I don't tend to overwork my paint as much. I still do it, you know, it, it's fine. If you overwork your paint, it, it happens. Now, the further up I go, um, the less paints on my brush because I want it to be smoothed out. And you can see, this is why I'm not a huge fan of color mixing. I do this all the time. I ended up pulling from the wrong color. <laughs> and so it's really orange, uh, reddish orange right here, which worked out. It was fine, but it wasn't the color I was intending to go and um, or intending to use but you know if that happens to you just keep working it keep playing around the paint was still wet so it was able to to bleed through spraying my paper a bit more here and you'll see that little pool of paint down there i just uh swoop it up i'm using an acrylic board uh here because it's quite nice and um you can get that on amazon i'll have a link below i actually think it's for a, a photo uh, frame <laughs> but it's really nice if my paper moving around bothers you I'm sorry about that I you can you know tape it down I, I don't really like to tape my paper down if I don't have to um, so but anyway be be sure to do that and you can see I took a paper towel now my paper towel is damp and I am removing or lifting uh, paint that I felt got away from me And then I just continue to play around with the colors of the pigment and moving it upwards, making it darker at the bottom and gradually fading it towards the top. So I just continue to play around. And now my most favorite exciting part is adding my trees. And if you have not seen how I do different types of evergreen trees, then be sure to click this video in the upper right hand corner, or of course, see the description below. I started off using this teeny tiny brush. I'm not even going to list it because it, I don't even know why I was using it. I just, I think I grabbed it, didn't think about it. <laughs> and realize why am I struggling with uh, with my trees. Um, so I do 
uh, switch eventually, but it's a really small uh, velvet touch brush, uh, mainly for details. Um, but you know, you can also see that bottom there. It's it's looking a bit overworked, a bit rough. Uh, you know, I do want to have lots of texture in that bottom to emphasize maybe there's bushes and, and things like that. But because I felt that it was a bit too much, I did end up lifting paint and I was able to do that because the paper was still so wet. Um, but it did leave a nice um, leftover brown when I lifted the paint. And I was able to make a road. And again, sorry if my my paper moving around bothers you. I typically like to hold the paper. You could um, spray the back of your paper at this point to get it stuck to the back. And it does curl, but because of the, the constant missing and adding more paint, it does eventually flatten and stay uh, relatively flat. And now I am finally switching and being smart uh, to my size to long round uh, by uh, Princeton. It's the Velvet Touch series. Changing up the direction of my tree branches here. And I will be honest, my initial intention with this painting was to not have it be so brown. It was to incorporate a bit more uh, lighter oranges and then have little accents of dark brown um, at the bottom. But, you know, it got away from me and that's just kind of how it goes. I think it still turned out okay. Um, but yeah, it, it did get a little bit dark. You can see I'm now lifting some of that pigment out just to create some more texture and maybe there's some mist down there. Um, yeah, it, you get to play around with it. Of course, if you play a little too much, then you might end up, you know, um, really overworking your paper, but you'll just have to figure that out on your own as you get to know your paint and your paper that you use. I always use Arches watercolor pressed paper so it holds a lot of water, just throwing that out there right now. I always, always use that paper specifically. And here's about the time that I'm realizing that it's a little boring. So now I'm lifting uh, the paint off the page. How I do that is you take your brush, you dip it in water, and then you clean it off with your paper towel to where it's just damp. And since the paint is quite wet, I'm able to run my brush over that paint and it just naturally lifts. And now you can see it's not a perfectly um, you know, path. It looks like the road is maybe going up over a hill and then it kind of disappears and wraps around the tree. So um, I thought that was fun and made this piece come together compared to what it was before I had the road. So, you know, you definitely can change things up when you're working with more of that wet into uh, wet. Even though most of my paper is dry, you can always re-wet an area and manipulate um, some of the paint, which is a lot of fun. And then for this tree, I did add a bit of black to the the brownish orange color which of course I used um, to get this uh, shade I used Payne's gray with the quinacridone orange and you're going to um, get a nice dark and moody hue of this orangish brown and then adding a little bit of black I like adding black I also love adding white to my watercolors um, you know do what you you want to do and of course, be sure to like and subscribe if you're still around and you haven't already. I appreciate you being here. But that is it as far as what I have done with this landscape. And you can splatter in some um, different colors, do some accents with gouache. Uh, really, it's up to you. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. Happy fall as we are heading into 
almost the end of October, which is crazy. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching everyone. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. All right. Take care. Bye.